Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's Carolina Outdoor Adventures TV. Today, producer Mark Davis is going to be on Santee Cooper Lakes with Billy Ward from Catch and Release Nation and also Tony Moore from Sea Island Bassmasters. And Billy and Tony are going to show us some of their tips they have used throughout the years bass fishing. So stick around and don't go away. We'll be right back. This week's Carolina Outdoor Adventures TV is brought to you in part by Camelback Hydration Systems. Do you have a camel on your back? By Bole Sportswear and Sunglasses. By Buckbuster Sense. Sense for the serious hunter. By Hummingbird Depth Finders. Only Hummingbird gives you the detail. And also by CVA. It's just a better gun. stumps like this here and lay downs pay attention to the water clarity because usually if it's clear water throw a lighter color bait if it's a dark color water throw a dark bait it's more dense and by throwing this speed vibe you have a little tail on it which gives a little vibrations through the water and every time you pop it off the bottom it keys that bass into something's moving over there and uh, being a curious thing in nature, they'll come along and just smack it just to see what it is, see if it'll move. We don't know how big it is. Oh, we got him in here. There he comes to the surface. And that's where you go, go back into the same hole twice. Nice one. And there's your little June bug red speed vibe Santee bass morning bass and this is the part of the catch and release building Jimmy Houston so Tony we're out here and this is my first time on Santee I've never you know been out on a boat out here I fished the banks before when I was younger but uh, there's a lot of different vegetation that I'm not used to around here can right. you, uh, you tell me a little bit about that well, mainly in this area here, we concern, this is considered the blowout hole. This is where the river meets the lake. And because we have extreme currents at time, we get a lot of different debris that gets blown in here. So we have some hydrilla and we have a uh, little bleeding heart type uh, grass here. We have these big sage uh, cattails and we have cypress trees and tupelo trees and lay downs. And a lot of times when you're fishing out here, the different structures a bass will relate to them and one day it might be a cypress tree and the next day it might be a tupelo or it could be the lay down and then occasionally they'll nestle right in between all of it just because it's something different and here in Santee we have a saying when you think you're fishing shallow go shallow right so, so whenever you're fishing these different types of structures and stuff like that what's some of the baits that you like using that are preferable if someone ain't never came down here before and they wanted to take their boat out and you know, be successful at catching fish, what, what should they do? Well here, uh, we have a lot of crayfish crawdads, so we throw a lot of zoom crawdad 
Uh, green pumpkin's a great color. Uh, California 420 speed vibe, when you go a little further down the lake, it gets clearer so that the river's not coming into it. And then uh, you can also throw a lizard, because you know, a lizard is like a natural predator to a bass, and uh, so they'll attack them. So the basic thing is if the water's stained, you want to go with a dark bait. If the water's light, go with a lighter bait. And then when you're at the dock, pay attention to see the fish swimming around. If there's little bait fish there, and they're one or two inches, try to throw something that's one or two inches. And if it's a light colored bait, try to match the hatch, as they say because that'll give you the odds in your favor. Now folks, there's a lot of people that'll give you advice and there's a lot of people that'll tell you different things, but I'm telling you right now, this guy right here, he's well known in this community. Uh, what's your actual uh, bass chapter that you're a part of? Uh, it's called Sea Island Bass Masters. They've been around for about 35 years and we've been associated to the South Carolina Bass Federation. And uh, we support the state of South Carolina and kids. We have a great group uh, that Randy Vaughn is the president of our Kids Association for the Bass Federation, and uh, he does a great job with our junior high, high school kids. They have a championship, and we fish all the lakes in the state of South Carolina, and uh, that's why I support the Federation, because it's a great organization for people who are getting started in bass fishing. They'll uh, tutor you along with a lot of the older guys that are in it. They'll actually show you the bait that they fish with. Uh, they'll let you ride along with them in their boat. And if you don't have a club and you want to fish, all you got to do is get in touch with South Carolina Bass Federation, and they'll put you in an organization, and you'll be able to experience all these beautiful lakes in the state of South Carolina. Right there. You need a net. Uh, he's, on, he's on that tree. Here he comes. He's out. Hey, you need a little bit for No, I got it. Oh, he's good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's in the boat. <laughs> He's in the boat. There you go. That's your giant lizard. Yep. Once again. That zoom lizard is showing off this morning. Not because there's current and pads and a, a lot of lay downs that you can't see. A good rule of thumb is, is if when you're out here, you since Tony just caught a little small one on a lizard, I mean a worm, I'm switching over, I'm going to uh, get off a of top water and do a little lizard fishing, see what we can do. Uh, got a bullet weight, maybe quarter ounce, what'd you say Tony? Yeah, it's quarter a ounce three bullet, a three alt hook, and I'm going to go with a uh, black and red glitter zoom, <coughs> zoom lizard, about eight inches, I want something kind of big, uh, so some of the bigger fish will be more interested than the little ones. But uh, we're going to toss it out there and see how she does. Out here in Santee, uh, we have a, the cypress trees. They have huge knees on them. So when you come here and you're fishing, don't just throw up on the tree. Throw to the tree and let it settle down and hop the bait back to you because these cypress trees have knees on them, little roots that bump up. How far out do you think they come? A lot of times when I fish them, I'll fish all the way back to the boat or until there's a sudden drop off. And a lot of times when you have that sudden drop off, you just don't want to start reeling back in. You want to see if there's a weight difference because that bass could already have it by that point. Now we caught a couple fish earlier and it's kind of got a little bit stagnant as far as the bite goes. What you, you know, you fish tournaments and stuff like that. What, what do you think we ought to do to get back on them? Well, here at Santee, there's a lot of people that live here, a lot of residents, so that means there's a lot of docks. So if you can find some deep water docks, four, here deep water is four feet, six feet, ten feet, and they're all over. You can fish up here where the river comes in, and it is one environment. You can run ten miles down the lake, and you'll think you're on an entirely different body of water. So uh, later on, we'll run and check out some docks and let you see what that's about. But here, we're fishing this stained water. So there's a lot of laydowns. Those knees on these cypress trees always, they trap debris as it comes down. So a lot of times when people are fishing tournaments here, uh, a local guy will fish history. A tournament guy will stop and fish a lot of times on what looks good and he'll catch fish because with current, water always drags things and things change and then the contour or the swing of the water will change. So like on these cypress trees when you're fishing them, don't just pick it up and roll it back to the boat. Work it all the way back to the boat. And then when you catch two or three fish, 
you might have something there. Stick to that. If you catch them three feet off, then throw up on the tree and roll back to three feet. If you don't catch nothing, go to the next one. And another thing, folks, whenever you're, you know, trying to do tournament fishing or anything like that, if you say, like, right here, we're going down this strip, and say we go down this strip and we catch a fish at, you know, 25%, another fish at 50, and then we go down the rest of the 50, and we don't catch nothing, don't be afraid to come back to the 25 and the 50 and go back through it again, because a lot of time, the fish is there for a reason, because... You know, like right now, especially with the weather that we're having, what did you say the temperature was today in the water? It was 84 degrees. And that's really high for fishing, you know. It's it's really hard fishing when you get that high of a temperature because everything, one, or rather just go to the bottom and try to stay cool, or they'll get up in these weeds and stuff right here and bury back in them. That way they're out of the sun. They're not having that much problem with, you know, trying to stay cool. But whenever, you know, Whenever you're going back through, if you find a spot where you catch a fish, try it again because there's a reason that fish is there. It didn't just randomly wake up this morning and go, I think I'm going to sit here on this stump, you know. It has a lot to do with the water temperature, the environment that the That's fish right. is in. Now, a lot of times when you're fishing a tournament, you'll go through a hole and you'll really tear them up. Catch four or five, maybe even limit out, call a couple times. Leave for 30 minutes, go fish another spot, you know, because most of the time when you're fishing a tournament, you'll have four or five spots. You'll want to hit those four or five spots in the morning before all the environmental changes, you know, like the heat gets too hot, the sun's way up in the sky. You want to fish those five or four spots when uh, everything is the same. Then you go back to those same holes where you caught them on the top water that morning, and then you pick up your worm or your lizard or your rage crawl or whatever it is that you're comfortable with and you drag it through there because these bass have to find thermal layers. That's how they keep their body cool or warming up or whatever. They'll look for that consistent temperature so that they can adapt. So don't be afraid to go back and fish the same water over and over again, but just don't fish it over and over and over five or six hours in a row because they'll get used to seeing the same bait. Just leave and come back in 30 minutes and try it again. And you'll be surprised on what you'll catch. Well, folks, I've come all the way down here and. Billy and Tony done caught one and I ain't caught nothing. So I'm gonna have to use some of these tips right now to see if I can't catch one. Y'all stay tuned. All right, folks, well, we're gonna wrap it up here today. Uh, I had an awesome time with Billy Ward from Catch and Release Nation. Nice and Mark. An awesome time with Tony Moore from Sea Island Bass Masters. And I tell you, we couldn't ask for a better day. We had a really nice morning with an overcast, then it got really hot, but then a nice overcast come back over us. And, you know, we got some fish in the boat. And is there anything y'all would like to say before we end the show? Just join Catch and Release Nation. Let's help support the group and spread the word all over the world and uh, let's try and bring the whole world together in one place and so, so, uh, keep the fish alive for the next generation to come. All right, well, you heard it here first, folks. Catch and Release Nation, like I said, just send me a message. Send uh, the group a message and they'll let you join. And I'd like y'all to have a great day and we'll see you next time here in the great outdoors. God bless.